All right, guys, so we're back out here. We've got some really crappy weather right now. Um, so I've been sitting inside tying flies a lot. And uh, the fly we're gonna show you right now is this new little double barrel frog pattern. It's got the two little frog legs on the back, some little legs up front, and then of course it's the double barrel. Uh, got some really cool eyes on it. I put some Chanel, kind of help it float. Got a little weed guard. Uh, it's been quite a while since I've thrown a fly rod, but what we're gonna try and do, lay it down, work it past these reeds right here on this side. I'll we're going to try and work it past these reeds right here and see if we can't get a fish. So let's give it a shot. All right, guys, so we got a little bass here on the pond. Uh, it is on this brand new frog that we just tied up this morning. Weed guard worked perfect, uh, right in the corner of the lip, went in nice. Um, I don't know, a little 12 inch fish or so, get him back. Um, so again, what we're throwing is the one we just got done tying. It is the double barrel frog with the little suede legs on it. And of course on this one I got that little bit of Chanel. I got the weed guards up underneath it to kind of protect it and get it to come over the top of these lily pads. All right, let me adjust a little bit to where we're at. All right, point the rod tip straight at it and just give it that quick little pop and see that thing kind of jumping up and down. Let it rest if you need to. Um, again, it's got great action just sitting still. Of course, a frog, you got to kind of determine how cold the water is and how fast you work that fly. The colder the water, the slower you want to work it. Um, if they're real active, there's a lot of things going on, you can work it a little bit quicker and give them less of a chance to kind of look at it. All right, guys. Um, so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to tie this little popper frog that I was using out there on the pond and uh, kind of show you a quick tutorial on how to do that. So uh, let me go over the materials you're going to need first. Um, as you can see, I've already got the, the hook up here in the vise. And what I'm going to be using is the Mustad CK74S in stainless steel. This one right here happens to be a size 2. And so if you look at it, you can tell it's got that little tiny kink in it. And that's going to kind of help to hold the frog up. Um, what we're going to be using for legs is the... The Cohen Creature Frog Legs. These are the two and a half inch. They come in white. It's like a, a soft suede material. And I've already gone in with some Sharpies and I've already colored them green. I just lay it down on top of a newspaper and that way I can just color the whole edges. Uh, from there, kind of moving forward, uh, I'm gonna take some of the Pearl Chanel. This is a medium and chartreuse. And we're gonna tie that on to get a little bit of a body. Um, the actual big body or the head is going to be this guy right here. It's the surface inducer, the double barrel popper and slider bodies. Um, so they're pretty cool right here. Uh, it's a big green foam kind of Mimi's popper looking kind of thing. Um, as far as eyes go, we're going to be using, again, same company that makes those. Uh, they got what's called the Dragon Eyes. Uh, these are four millimeter, kind of an orange and yellow, uh, kind of offset the, the green there. And then, of course, for front little legs, we're going to go with the barrel rounded rubber medium, dark olive, and uh, yellow. Um, so those will work out perfect. All right. So we've already got it. Uh, oh, and then for thread, we're going to go ahead and use this denier right here. This is 210 and just a standard uh, fluorescent green. All right. So. To go ahead and get started here, what you're going to want to do is you want to tie on about halfway between the bump and the curve of the hook. And uh, let's see if I can do this without blocking the camera too much here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and tie on, get it started. Cut that guy off there. And now I'm going to wrap all the way back down to the halfway down the shank of the hook. All I'm really trying to do is just cover uh, and giving a little bit of grip to the shank of this hook. Uh, I'm going to be putting a double weed guard on. That double weed guard is going to be made out of 30 pound monofilament. All right, and then I take the, the thread wrap right back to where I started. So what I'm going to use for weed guard is this one right here. It's Rio Alloy Hard Saltwater Tippet. It's a 30 pound test. Um, I've already got a couple pieces pre-cut here and ready to go. 
and you're just gonna tie one end to each side. So I'm gonna start right up here, give it a couple of loose wraps. And I just want it to situate right along the edge of the hook. Just like that. All right, so let me go ahead and grab the other side now. So do the same thing on the other side here. And of course you want the curves kind of going forward. It's going to make it a lot easier for you. Start off with it kind of loose. And that way you can kind of get them positioned. I want them to flare out just a little bit so that I can kind of create that, that weed guard on there. All right. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and work my way back and get right down to where I made my final wrap at the middle of that hook shank. And when you do that, what's going to happen is this mono is going to follow that bend of the hook. All right, go ahead and bring myself all the way back up to the middle here. Um, I don't need quite that much uh, monofilament, so I'm going to go ahead and trim both those off. Make sure they're laying nice and flat, and I can kind of clean up that material there. Alrighty, and of course I'm throwing for largemouth bass, so you know I want to make a pretty bulletproof fly. Um, so just as I kind of go along, I'll just put a dab of uh, Zappa Gap down as I work throughout the, the process. Um, I do like to go ahead and pull these back. I got this little spring uh, material holder back here in the back, and I kind of get these out of my way for now. Alrighty, um, so the next step is going to be to add a little bit of this Chanel material and of course to add the legs. So I'm going to start off by getting the legs. You can see that little piece of that tab that I didn't color there. That's what I'm going to lay down first. Now of course you got to kind of size up the head to know exactly where it's going to sit. And it's going to sit right about there. So right about where my hook is hanging already is where I'm going to want to go ahead and tie this down. So I'm going to lay those right over the top, kind of pinch the material down around the hook shank, and just make a couple loose wraps. If you pull it down too tight, what's going to happen is the material is going to want to kind of twist and work its way around that hook shank. So once I kind of get my base layer going, at that point I can go through and kind of secure it down a little bit tighter. All right, excellent. So now, bring the thread toward the back here. I'm gonna go ahead and take my, my Chanel, and I'm gonna go ahead and lay it down and tie that in. And then I'm gonna work my way forward and kind of get the hook, the thread out of the way. And so with this, the whole point is to kind of cover up that little tab and then give a little bit more of a transition on that body from the foam head back to the legs. Alrighty. So that looks about where I want to stop. I'm going to go ahead and bring that thread back. Kind of secure that material down right behind that little bend in the hook. Go ahead and trim the excess off here. Alrighty. So now I'm going to go ahead and wrap all the way forward. I want to put down a good base layer of this thread material. And that's going to really help to get the glue to grab a hold of uh, this foam head. Got to give it something to kind of hold on to. I'm not going to go all the way to the end, you'll notice. Um, I want to be able to start fresh whenever it comes time to tie on those weed guards. So now that I've got that done, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of do the whip finish tool here a couple times. I need to tighten my vise a little bit.
Alrighty. And I can go ahead and cut the thread off. All right, so that's the start of the fly. So now the next step is to take the body. So when you pull one of these bodies out, it has a hole in the back. You can kind of see where I've already slid in a bobbin right in there. So I went ahead and slid it in, went ahead and centered myself, and I went ahead and glued the eyes in already. I just used Zap-A-Gap and put a drop in each side and drop those eyes in. Um, while I've got it on this bobbin though, one of the things I like to do is take a second bobbin and slide it through right above the, the first one, right behind the eyes to create the little set of legs. So I'm gonna go ahead and get myself started here and I'm just gonna make sure I'm going nice and straight, straight across. I wanna come out in the exact same spot on the other side. So once I've pushed that all the way through, I can go ahead and pull that piece back out and it'll be time to go ahead and attach, you can see my little hole there, it'll be time to attach my legs. Um, so what I'm gonna use for that is a rubber leg puller. You can see it's got the fine little needle right here with a hole in it. So all you really do is you just slide that right back through that original hole. Now you're gonna take your silly legs or your rubber silly legs here, and I've got four of them. And I'm just gonna slide them into that little hole. Now, if you don't happen to have one of these, you can always uh, use a threader, uh, push your bobkin through, and then slide a slip a threader through, and that also will work for you as well. And let's see here. Number three. And number four. All right, I'm gonna hold on to those for a second. You can see I'm just gonna pull this back down and pull it through. All right. So once I've got it pulled through, I need to make sure to hold on to the one side of legs and then keep pulling the other legs through. And they'll slowly make it all the way through the body. And once they do, you'll be able to size up exactly what you need. And at that point is when you can trim them. And where I'm going to try and trim these legs, I don't want them real long. The longer you make these legs, the more likely they are to uh, foul with the hook. So all I want to do is I want to come out anywhere from about a half inch. Let me see if I can get these to hang straight. If I can come out anywhere from a half inch to three quarters of an inch on each side, the other thing you can do is these got little bands. So you can see you got a one, two, three, four dark bands. I'm gonna cut right before the fifth one. All right, and then you can do the same thing on the other side. One, two, three, four, cut right before the fifth one. There you go, and that's a good even way to get your legs nice and even, all right? So now I can slip it off that bobbin. So what I need to do now is apply super glue and then slip this on, but you need to be quick about it because that super glue will set up to this foam very, very fast. Uh, especially this Zappa Gap, this is not the fast cure, this is not the pink, this is the medium CA, uh, but you still wanna be ready for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little bit down, and of course it'll push it back as we go up against that uh, up against that Chanel as well. All right, get that guy on there. Once you can kind of get it past the eye of the hook, you're pretty much in business. And it's already, oops, went way too far. All right, let's get back off there real quick. All right, so now I've got my legs, I got a little bit of my Chanel to create my transition, and I still have my opening up here at the front. So now I can go ahead and reattach the thread at the front. Let me tighten this guy up a little bit here. All right. 
So now I'm going to reattach out in front. Trim off the tag. See if I can turn this at an angle a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to take my first weed guard and I'm going to bring it down and under. Secure that with a couple wraps right there. Now let's do the other side as well. Make sure not to get the legs hung up in there. And lay it down next to it. All right, so I got a couple wraps kind of holding them in place there. And I want to make my wraps behind it. I also want to make my wraps in front of it. All right. Let's make a couple more little helicopter wraps here. Excellent. So now that I've done that, I can go ahead and do the whip finish again. And go ahead and trim off the excess there. So before you super glue this down, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have them the exact same distance. So you can tell one side is definitely a lot lower over here than this one. So what I'm going to do is I, when I'm done, I want it about where the far one is here, about an eighth of an inch below the point of the hook. However, what I need to do is slide them both down a little bit. Because what I'm going to try and do, excuse me, I'm not sliding them down, I'm pulling them up. I want to pull them up about to even with the hook. So you can see how it's flush right there. And now I'm going to trim them off right about where they intersect there. Nice. Now you can see I've got just about an, that much sticking out and that's the distance that I want below the hook. So now I can take a lighter burn both of those so now they got that little nub on each one of those pieces and now I will take that nub and I will pull it back down and what that does is that makes it real difficult for those to pull back through and if you'll notice they're gonna protect that hook as well so now I've got them positioned the way I want I want it to kind of open up I want them to sit below the hook I'm going to hold them there and I'm going to go ahead and apply the last little bit of Zappa Gap to the head. And you want to kind of hold it for a second because you want those pieces of mono to kind of open up. You don't want them real tight to the hook. You want them to open. Um, that way they don't interfere with the actual hook set. All right. Now, of course, you can take your marker and you can do all kinds of little fancy things with this frog. Um, you can put the pattern going down the back. I see guys airbrush that. Um, I see different colors on the legs. Um, whatever it may be that you want to do, you can add all of that in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it back in the vise one more time. And I'm going to flip it. Flip these legs back up over the top of the frog. And I'm going to apply one last little drop of Zappa Gap. And I'm going to ride it right there. Uh, what's interesting about the Zappa Gap is it does turn the green kind of a reddish color. And the reason I'm putting that there is I want these legs to stay straight back. I don't want them to start falling forward and interfering with the hook. 
Um, but I do want them to kind of follow the body. So when the frog's sitting there, the legs aren't sitting back like that on the surface. They kind of sit down a little bit. A more of a natural kind of look of what a real frog is going to look like. So again guys, it's not a giant by any means, but what it is, it's a lot of fun. You know, it's been a long time since I've been out here. These little fish are so pretty. Uh, you can see he took that frog, again, perfect, right in the bottom of the mouth, exactly like you want. You don't hurt the fish. Um, <laughs> I just love how pretty these little guys are. Got that really nice lateral line going down inside, healthy looking fins, no tears in the mouth, real nice red gills. So let's go ahead and get this guy back in the water. All right, guys. Well, that's it. That's the, the double barrel frog right there with weed guards. Um, if you got any questions whatsoever, please comment below. Um, hit the thumbs up if you like this video. And uh, don't forget to subscribe because we'll have more tying videos coming out. I appreciate it and uh, stay tuned until next time. Thanks.